Hey guys, I apologize for being a couple minutes late. Uh, practice ran over a little bit. Um, good to see you again. A little bit weird a week um, with trying to cram everything in for the Friday game, but uh, so far going smoothly. Um, certainly a different year when you have national signing date on a, on a what amounts to a Wednesday slash Thursday of game week, but everything came off smoothly this morning. We're, we're thrilled with, uh, with the class we were able to sign today. And um, just another step in the right direction of building this program into uh, what I think we all want it to be. So uh, having said that, I'll open it up to questions and you guys uh, try to help you out with whatever you need. Tom Canavan from the AP. How you doing, Greg? Hey, Tom, yeah. how are you? Good. Um, quick question. Uh, with the snow predicted, I mean, have you done anything to – Get re players ready for possibly slick conditions, wet ball, whatever. I think the snow will be gone by game time. I, you know, not be gone from the ground, but be gone from the, the it being a condition that we have to deal with. The, I think the bigger thing is going to be just the really frigid temperatures. It's supposed to be single digits by game time, and uh, uh, I don't think I've ever coached in single digits. I may have, yeah, maybe when I was at uh, Chicago going out to Green Bay. But I was in the press box. All I had to do was get through warm-ups, and then the rest was drinking coffee and telling what personnel group they were in. Question, Bobby Darren, 24-7. Greg, with uh, signing day uh, now, 21 guys, do you have more coming? Uh, it, what's the plan moving forward? You know, Do you, uh, do you plan to do uh, transfers? How do you kind of handle it? Well, I'm not going to get into ever giving away a competitive advantage in recruiting or football, but yeah, we, we never stop recruiting. Um, I'm not going to let you know what how many we have left, if we have any left. Not you, but anyone know that. That's always something that I keep very private. Um, but long and short of it is we're always looking to improve our roster, but it's got to be guys that are a cultural fit, guys that are an academic fit, and certainly guys that are a football fit. We're going to go to Chris Eisner with Gannett. Hey, Greg, a lot of these guys are uh, like a good portion, more than half it looks like, are going to be mid-year enrollees. I mean, how, how important is that going to be to start working with them as soon as possible, especially given, you know, the uncertainty of what the spring is going to look like and things like that? Yeah, you know, it's become the kind of what the norm is now. You get a lot of guys in college football with this mid-year enrollee stuff. And, uh, you know, there's parts of me that love it, and there's parts of me that say, are we stealing something from young people's lives. You know, if you think back, now maybe I'm old school, but that, that second semester senior year was a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, they lose out on that. But we're talking about guys that are potential NFL players, right? So we're, now we're talking about making a living doing something. And certainly that head start of a whole semester, you get an additional install, you're training with your strength coaches, all that stuff. From a football standpoint, uh, they certainly benefit. So we, you know, uh, we, we have a, uh, something that we kind of deal with our recruits. The minute they become committed to us, it, it goes from recruiting to development. And that's exactly what we, we began with a lot of these guys months ago, you know, just trying to get them ready to be college football players. Because no matter how good you are in high school, when you come to the Big Ten Conference, everybody's good. It's a, you know, it's a big boy league now. So uh, I think the development is critical. And those guys get a six-month or – Four-month head start, for sure. Thanks, Cratch. NJ.com. Greg, the third backs, like, I guess, current, how's Noah doing? And future, you didn't sign a quarterback in this class. I mean, I'm sure you could add one down the road. Do you, are you a guy who thinks you, you prefer, preferably would sign one each cycle, or do you not maybe subscribe to that theory? Well, let's deal with here and now first. Noah is doing everything possible to get ready to play this game, and he would do that no matter who we were playing, but certainly with it being Nebraska, I think there's even an extra motivation. I can't tell you right now what it's going to look like. It may be so darn cold he won't know his ankles hurting him. You know, we'll see, but um, we'll see. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna. It's going to be like I said earlier in the week. It'll be a late in the week. Well, now we're getting late in the week. It'll probably be um, game day decision. You know, we gained a little bit of time. We went from four o'clock to seven thirty. So uh, I don't know if that'll change anything. Three and a half hours, but who knows. Um, we'll figure that out. As far as quarterbacks go, um, if the right one, it's always, it's always about the fit. To me, it's all about are these guys, whoever these guys are, are they a fit for our program? 
And not every great player, you know, is a fit for our program. And I have no problem with that. Uh, maybe when I was younger, I, I wanted that because I wanted to have the impression that, you know, we are recruiting and it's going. So I really, you know, it's nice that it's ranked or whatever, but I don't care. I want the right people for our program because if we get them here and we develop them and they believe in what we believe in and they're hard workers, uh, sky's the limit. So that's kind of where, I don't know, I guess that all comes with age. Richie Schneider from Rivals. Coach, you added five defensive linemen to, in this recruiting class. I think all five, if I'm correct, uh, had other power five offers. Can you just talk about those five in particular and uh, what they're going to bring to your program? Well, I'll talk about the position first. I think the defensive line is the most important position other than quarterback in your program. Because the defensive line, if you have a tough defensive line, it makes your entire program tough. It makes your O-line tougher which in turn, when you have good O-line, D-line battles, it makes your running backs tougher, makes your linebackers tougher. Uh, everything stems, I believe, off that defensive line. So you need, I consider it a, a must to go recruit defensive linemen every year. Because remember now, it's four guys. We play a four-down scheme, even though it's a hybrid four-down. Uh, it's four-down guys. It's that kind of body type long. Uh, and you need to always replenish that. And every once in a while, a D lineman may go and move over to the O-line if he has that kind of skill set. So I think there's a lot of uh, position flexibility when you get the right guys in your program. Um, and big people are hard to find. Big people that can move are really hard to find. So when you get one that you think is a cultural fit, you got to go as hard as you can. And uh, uh, Coach Panagos has done a really good job. Uh, I, I, I want to take this point so I don't forget to do this. Eric Josephs, who's our director of player development, just did an incredible job. From the day I got hired, and, and you guys who know me, um, the odds of me making the director of player personnel someone that I've never met um, are pretty much slim and none. But from the day I walked into this building, Eric's been like my right-hand man. And, uh, you know, he did an incredible job. He and his staff, or certainly no one does it by themselves, but Eric and his staff did an incredible job this entire recruiting cycle. And and our position coaches, our assistant coaches, did an incredible job. They just busted their tail throughout the season, throughout COVID. Um, I think back to all those days sitting back in my office at home and the lineup, you know, we do seven or eight um, WebExes with recruits. Um, just an incredible commitment by our coaches. And that's how we were able to put together a class that I think is just a great cultural fit for our program. And they're really talented players. So uh, I want to, I want to express my gratitude to them um, because it was a, a, an awesome effort and, it, and it, it puts the trajectory of our program where I want, want it to be. And, uh, and that's going this way uh, with, with recruiting. Um, 22 is going to be a very interesting year. There's a lot of good players out there. There's a there's a whole confluence of factors that are going to come to fruition at, at the end of the 22 season that everybody in college football is going to have to deal with, and it's going to be very interesting to see how that goes. Keith Sargent, NJ.com. Great. We've talked about New Jersey recruiting in the past. I think you have nine total. Uh, do you like that uh, number overall, and how do you think you did in state? I thought it was 11 total, but I might be wrong. Um, who knows? I, I love, you know, obviously everything starts and finishes with New Jersey and New York, right? I mean, that's, that's where we are. That's right here. They touch, they can get here in two hours tops. And, uh, we got a lot of good football players in, in, in our region. And then after that, it's, you go where you need to go to get what you need to get for, 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 to put together your football team. And, uh, I love the distribution. You know, we're, we're never going to be handcuffed to, just you got to have people from here or from there. But for us to be successful, we have to be successful in our, in our backyard. And it's a start. It's not where we need to be, but it certainly is a start. It's a good start. But again, the trajectory is going like this. And uh, we just need to keep chopping away at all the little things. It's about relationships. And it's hard because we can't see each other in person. You know, it's been a dead period now for a long time. 
But I think, like I said earlier, our, our assistant coaches and Eric and his staff are doing an incredible job of creating opportunities to communicate with these, these players and their families. So we just have to keep, keep doing it. Eventually, eventually. Uh, the, the virus will, will uh, with the vaccine, hopefully will subside and we'll be able to get back on the road recruiting and have people down to our campus and all that. But until then, we just got to keep chopping away at what we're doing. And, and uh, that 22 class is going to be critical. NJ.com. Hey, Greg, are you able to recruit a different level of player than you might have been able to 10 years ago? Uh, and along those lines, has your recruiting pitch uh, to players and their families changed from what it would have been 10 years ago? Uh, both those are really good questions, Steve. Um, I feel like we kind of picked up where we left off when we left 11 or where was it, 10 years ago. Thank God, right? Thank God we didn't have to go back to 2001 stage to get started. Um, I think a couple things. Our credibility as a staff, you know, been here, done that. People know that it can be done and we've done it. Um, now we have, a, I think, a much better product, and that's the Big Ten Conference, to go along with Rutgers. And I said this when I took the job. I think Rutgers is uniquely different than when I left and our staff left back in 2011. You know, with, with the medical school, uh, with the campus just totally being, you know, $1.5 billion in construction on our campus from when I left till today. I mean, it's incredible uh, um, to be able to show the student athletes what Rutgers is. It's a totally different place than when I was here the first time. So a better, a better league, right? An elite league, one of the best, if not the best in the country, academically and athletically, beautiful campus now, which I used to hide the campus. Right? It wasn't something that I really was proud of. And now, man, I, I can't wait to get the kids on our campus. Uh, and, and academically, I think the school's gone like this. So it's always been a competitive school. But I think with the, with the uh, medical school coming in and everything, just everything's going this way. The business school, you, you go down the list, pick which one you want. It's really a, an elite academic institution. And um, I just I'm excited about what's happening at Rutgers and happening in Jersey. I think the momentum is, is picking up steam. Malski with rivals. Hey, coach. Uh, I know you mentioned Noah's injury. Um, you know, let's say he is 100 percent and he is healthy to go. Um, has Art showed you enough to be able to potentially start? You know, I don't get into the hypotheticals. Um, we're going to see what is, and then they're both. You know, they're both really good quarterbacks, and I and I have to think Cole's a good quarterback, and Evans a good. We have a good room. I've said that many times. Let's see what happens, and we'll determine how it, how it goes. And then you'll see as the game unfolds, you know, who we felt gave us the best chance to win, who you felt. You know, that's how guys start around here. You know, what I've always said is we are going to play the guy that gives us the best chance to win. Now, if it means multiple guys playing because there's, they're going to ham and egg it, and, they're, you know, this guy's going to handle this part, this hand is going to handle that part, that's good too. There's only one goal, and that's to win the game. Now, we don't always, as coaches, put together the perfect plan, right, but we try to. And we try to put together the right mix of personnel, who does it, when they do it. Uh, that's the secret, you know, of coaching, trying to get your people in place and put the right people in place to make the plays they're capable of making. So we'll see about that uh, as far as, you know, all the positional things, but especially, obviously, at quarterback. Ashley Melorannon from the Press of AC. Hey, Coach, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Um, a quick question, are you are you allowed to, um, specifically allowed to comment on any of these recruits? Yeah, all the guys that have signed their their uh, their scholarship papers, I'm allowed to comment on them all. Would you like to ask me about one? Uh, yeah, just two in particular, Keshawn Griffin and Carnell Davis. Can you just talk about those two and you know what kind of intrigued you? That uh, I love her talk. Sure, I'd love to talk about them both. Give me the first one again. Uh, Keshawn Griffin. Okay. Yeah. Kayshawn Griffin is a big athlete, can do a lot of different things, and he's only going to get bigger. Uh, Jay Butler is going to look at him. He's already seen him, but Jay Butler is going to be like, you know, as excited as anybody because this is a big man, and he's only going to get bigger, stronger, and faster. One of the things that I really like about our class, again, right, is the, is the, the speed and the length that we have in this class. You know, bigger – Longer and faster. If we can continue to get bigger, longer, and faster over the years, and they're a cultural fit, then that's how you really improve as a football team. And I think, you know, um, 
with with Keishon, I think he's just all of the above. I think he's a cultural fit. I think he's a long, fast, and he's going to get to be incredibly strong uh, mm -hmm. when he works with Jay Butler. And then who was the other guy you wanted to ask about? Carnell Davis. Oh, yeah, another big, long, fast receiver. Really like Carnell. Uh, tremendous competitor. I mean, an intense competitor. He reminds me of guys I've coached in the past. You know, big receivers, strong receivers. He really comes off the ball. He When he comes, he comes off the ball. Um, is a big man. So I, I'm excited about that. I think that'll be a really good mix. Uh, uh, our receivers that we're bringing in are going to be a really good mix to what we already have on the pro in the program. Let's go. Hi, Coach. How you doing? Can you talk a little bit about the oddity of you still have a game to play and yet you're still trying to close these guys out? You know, the last couple of weeks while you got game prep, I know the, the early signing day is kind of new, and, and sometimes you still have a, a bowl after that. Um, but two, as you progressed in this season, and as the buzz has been generated, how that might have helped you to be kind of in the midst of it all, and in the midst of this team winning big games as you're trying to close out some of these guys. Well, you know, well, the one thing that I've loved about this class is um, we've recruited them for a long time. We know them very, very well. And it really was the culmination of everything that's already happened. You know, these guys are, they feel like they're already part of our team, part of our family. So it was great to get them all officially part of the family, but it was nothing really new. Uh, but to, to your point, there was a point last night where I was like, this is insane, right? I mean, I'm jumping from the offense to the defense to the special teams to the phone. Um, and finally around midnight, I said, I, I got to go to bed. I mean, and um, it is different, but you know what? As we've said so many times, 2020, everything about 2020 has been different. So why shouldn't it be? And uh, we just keep going. And um, I'm really excited about this class. I hope that it being during the season doesn't shortchange these young men of their recognition. And I hope that doesn't happen because they don't, they've worked their tails off their entire athletic life to get into this position. So I hope that uh, I know that our our, our uh, creative people and our media people have done an incredible job with graphics and videos. And, and, and I want that because this is a special day for these young men. And uh, I want them to make sure that they get the recognition they deserve. Here, Anthony Facility, Rutgers Radio Network. Coach, how you doing? Um, well, Fooch, how are you? Can you comment on having two players being honored uh, by the Big Ten and 03 in the first team? What kind of statement that is, Travy on the third team? And also, in recruiting the secondary players you're bringing in to help the back end of that defense. Well, um, yeah, I was really proud of our players that got recognized uh, by the Big Ten. Um, quite honestly, I thought we had some more guys that deserve recognition, but you know, we're not going to we're not going to get caught up in that stuff. All we can control is how we play and how we how we prepare, and then how we go out and play. Um, as far as the secondary players we're bringing in. I'm really, uh, let me talk about 03 and Trey, though, because they did get recognized. And 03's had a tremendous year, and it's all because he's worked extremely hard. Um, he's very talented, but talent alone is what got his results. Uh, he works extremely hard at his craft, and Trey Avery is the same way. So I love to see guys who work really hard get recognized, right? Because when your hardest workers are your best players, that's when it's easy to coach. You know, because all I got to do is say, look at them. They didn't get that by, you know, cutting corners. They didn't get that by not studying. They got that through really paying attention to the details, taking care of their bodies, training very hard, right? That, that reinforces as a coach what I believe and what our culture of our program is. So I'm thrilled about, about that. The secondary, I think we, we really have some really fine guys coming in. Um, you know, when you, when you look, and I'm just going to go down so I don't miss anybody, right? But Elijah Clark, I think, is an elite-level defensive back uh, out of Camden. And really have enjoyed, you know, getting to know him and, and bringing him into the family. And then as I go down the list, um, Desmond Igmanusen, really an elite player out of Union. We've got a little Union pipeline going that's pretty exciting, right? With, with uh, you know, you saw Mike. I, I, I didn't know, you know, Mike chopped, yes, that when he made that play, and then he shot the U up there. I said, whoa, 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 slow down with the U. Well, that was Union High School, obviously, but we know there's another U that I don't I don't quite want to be representing on TV, but uh, 
I, I do. I was really excited about about Desmond. Uh, he's he's a really good athlete. Now there's going to be a fight in our building because he's also a very good receiver. So uh, get ready. The coaches are they're classics when it comes to battling over players. Shaquan Loyal, just another big, long, fast defensive back. You know, out of North West Side. So I'm really excited about the defensive backs. And I think one of the things, you know, with, with coach Fran Brown, um, these kids are really tight. They're really connected and, uh, I can't wait to get them here and get them started in, in their development. Um, I hope I don't forget anybody there, but I'm, I'm excited about, about really every position we brought in, but, uh, you know, being an old DB coach myself, I get excited when I see some, some long, fast athletic corners. I know you knew that, food, so that's why you asked the question. Look at you smiling over there with that smirk. Yeah. I'm going to take two more questions. We'll go back to Richie Schneider right from Rivals. Coach, this uh, recruiting class, you guys added two uh, prospects from Berkeley Prep. You obviously are very familiar with the program between coaching and recruiting there even during your Ohio State days. What kind of relationship do you have with Coach Xiao, and what kind of relationship do you still have with the program? Um, Sorry if I pronounced that yeah, correct. Coach Sayo, yeah, he, he is a dear friend. Um, he he was my boss for two years. We joke around. I was the assistant D-line coach. Not the D-line coach, the assistant D-line coach the, uh, uh, to Money Mike. You know, my, uh, He knows who he is. He, he kept a tight grip on me. So as the assistant D-line coach, I was in charge of teaching, teaching the freshmen how to tackle. That was always fun. I took all the freshmen over there on the on the crash mat, and, and Coach Sio used to, you know, he said he paid me a big salary when I worked there. So I was doing ESPN, I was doing NFL Live. So I don't know, twice a month I'd have to fly out of Tampa, and to be able to do practice, I would I would fly to New York and then have to drive up to Bristol, and uh, he would pay me with a, a, a Cuban sandwich. There'd be a Cuban sandwich in the fridge when I came running off the field. I'd grab the Cuban, I'd take a shower, grab the Cuban and hustle off to the airport, and he used to always bust my chops. You know, that was a big salary. Every week I showed up, he'd give me, like, a piece of clothing. He'd give me a pair of shorts. He'd say, Coach, here's your pay for the week. So it was we, – we had a lot of fun. And, you know, the, the memories are coaching my three sons. They were all playing at the time at Berkeley, which – how can you ever replace that, right, to be able to coach your three sons at once? Um, that was awesome. And I got to know a lot of those kids – you know that 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 we that's a that is a program that is very similar to ours, and I think that's why uh, Berkeley prep players like to come here, and I think that's why Coach Sio and I hit it off so well. Is his program is run very much like ours. It's a family, and he cares deeply about his players. Now he's no softy cakes. I mean, he's old school, and he demands a lot of those kids, but they know he loves them, and uh, I think our program's the same way. So yeah, I I hope that uh, you know that. The connection is one that's going to be very valuable over the years for sure. And I hope I didn't just get myself in trouble. I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about all that stuff, but what are you going to do? We'll take our final question from James Cratch, NJ.com. Greg, you mentioned a second ago how, how you know guys might fight over Desmond. How does that work? Like, I guess so like, when you guys put a position on a player's name today, does that mean you've made a call? Does that mean it could change? I guess are you the tiebreaker, I would assume, in this whole process? Yeah, it definitely could change many times, but yeah, there's only one decision that really matters, and I am the tiebreaker, but I love to hear them fight. I mean, they, they always give me good reasons for their cause, and you know, I've been them, right, recently, so I, I have this unique perspective of being a head coach for a long time and then going back and being an assistant coach, so I can really appreciate the passion that they show, because I know in, in, in the coordinator's minds and in the position coach's minds, they have a vision for that individual player. And they have a vision how they'll use them schematically. They have a vision. And uh, when a guy can do multiple things, it's interesting, to say the least, to listen to these guys kind of debate back and forth why he should be on this side of the ball. But ultimately, my job is to have that 30,000-foot view and say, okay, where, do, where does it best benefit the team early on? And then my commitment to the player is where does it best benefit their chance to go play at the next level? later in their career. That's kind of how I look at it. When they're young, you know, they're going to learn how to be part of our program and at what position there's some value, but it's not huge. But as they get on in their career, even a little bit, we got to kind of lock them in then 
you know, what it, what is their chance to be a, to be a professional? And we want to get them at that position. So that's kind of how I handle it. Is there ever like a famous tiebreaker? You've made a decision, you know, a guy who was renowned at Rutgers that maybe was going to go another direction if you hadn't stepped in. Well, I don't know if they go the other direction, but, uh, in terms of the position. Yeah. You remember Muhammad Sanu started out as a safety. I don't know if you remember that. So there, there was great coaching, right? We had him at safety. Now he would have been a heck of a safety. Don't get me wrong. But, uh, you know, one of the finest athletes I've ever coached period at any level. So, uh, eventually we, he got to where he belonged. Um, you know, I think sometimes when, especially when I was younger, you failed forward, you know, you kind of made mistakes and oh, that wasn't very smart. I try to look at it now from the whole program perspective, where, 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 where will he fit best and where will he have a chance to help the team win? Like I said, early on, and then a little bit later on, where will it help him get to the NFL fastest and best? Time coach. Hey, thank you guys. We'll see you, I guess, Friday.